is, there he is, there he is. Gang, gang. That was not planned, ladies and gentlemen. Good afternoon, good evening, good morning, good night. Welcome to another video. Welcome to the Shifted Perspective YouTube channel. In this video, we're gonna do a little, quick little conversation, a poll, and uh, some results of uh, a lot of questions that have been going around the channel, the Instagram, and uh, all the peeps around uh, the YouTube community. And that is going to be the new vehicle that uh, is going to be added to the stable. So as you guys already know, I've been thinking about getting a Jeep replacement vehicle. So 2005 Jeep Grand Cherokee, 150,000 miles, uh, CarMax and all the dealers, they only want to give me like two grand for it. And for that little of a price, I might as well just keep the damn thing. There really hasn't been any problems. Um, you know, I did a lot of the cooling system and the lift and all that stuff already. So a lot of the big stuff is done and it's doing just fine. I honestly, uh, really we can jump right into it. I took the damn thing to Chicago and back. It's a six hour drive. It's like seven or so hundred miles round trip. And it did just fine. You know, it's not the best highway car cause it's kind of big and has a roof basket and stuff, but it's fine. Um, I did get about 15 miles a gallon on the highway, which is great. I was thinking about a Jeep replacement. So I had all these things. I was thinking about a truck. I was thinking about a Wrangler. And uh, really what's happening is everything is now going to be on the table. So it's not going to be a four-wheel drive vehicle. It does not have to be a truck. And uh, the purpose of this video is to get your guys' input as to what you think I should get. If someone gives me a good price for this Jeep, so if someone says, I will give you four grand for this, I will probably sell it for four grand, to be honest with you guys. And maybe that doesn't sound like a great price, but uh, four grand is significant enough that I can either uh, save it, invest it, roll it, uh, mod another car, whatever. It's enough money that makes sense for me to uh, actually get rid of it. You know, if someone's willing to buy it for that price, um, or even the high threes, 3,800. So if you guys are interested, there's a lot of guys that are interested, but the difference is having the right buyer that's willing to pay for it. Not that there's really a problem with this vehicle besides the transmission differential being a little chattery. No one has been super interested in it, which is kind of hard to believe because everyone seems to really like it. So back to what I was saying, everything is on the table. Um, it does not have to be a Jeep equivalent. It can be anything from a Honda S2000 all the way to a Hummer. I mean, it doesn't matter. Uh, keep in mind, there is a chance I will be keeping the Jeep if no one wants to pay a decent price for it. That means I would have three cars, um, which is not ideal for one person, um, at least right now, especially considering I just have one garage bay. And I actually did offer to pay my neighbors uh, a monthly amount to bar use their space. I mean, he's not even parking in here right now, and he has uh, an older car. Everything is on the table. I did a recent poll on Instagram, and I will probably do another one, but I want you guys to put in the comments below uh, what you think I should get. And keep in mind, it has. I want it to be something I can drive as frequently as I want. So if it's something like a convertible that's like 25 years old or something like that, it's gonna be hard to sort of daily it. I do want it as a vehicle that I can drive it as much as I want, which is why I like both of these cars. The Jeep I can drive as much as I want. There's really no issue there ever. Any weather issues, of course. And then the daily aspect, it's very doable. Uh, it's great in traffic because it's an automatic. Where the M3, you definitely can daily um, and it's not a huge deal if you daily, then uh, my E92 M3, it's not a huge deal, uh, but it is manual. It takes a little while to warm up and it's not really that fun when I'm kind of, you know, commuting. So I do want to think about a car that I can commute in. Keep that in mind. It's not going to be a weekend car. So don't think of it as a car I'm only going to drive once a week, but I do want another car for the, for the channel. A bunch of you guys, um, the, one of the highest suggestions was an E46 M3. If you guys think I should get that, you can comment below, that's fine. And uh, that's in no way saying that I'm going to get that car, uh, but it is a car I actually, I, I wanted one when I was looking at the, my 335 years ago. And then I did kind of consider it when I was thinking about the M3, but uh, this is a, a, I wouldn't say a bigger boy car, a little more expensive, a little newer, and it's definitely a car 
uh, that I've always liked. The E46 was kind of my generation. Though. That was like the newest M3 when I was like into cars. I was like, you know, 12 years old or whatever. So uh, that that was a, definitely a car that I can like. And also the E39 M5 as well. <laughs> four doors v8 i mean um it that's an amazing car so a lot of you guys said that a bunch of you guys said e60 m5 As much as yes, that would be a great car for the channel, um, the maintenance on it really makes me nervous. You know, the V10, it had a lot of technology that was like latest and greatest, and a lot of it now is 10 years old. So I do get nervous about a extremely high performance uh, BMW V10 engine that's, you know, 10 plus years old. So. That does make me nervous. A couple people did say Wrangler. So there was kind of a consistency to some extent. And then there's the random people who said you should get a convertible or a Mustang or a few people said GTIs, which is cool. But I feel like a lot of people have GTIs. So I don't know. It, there's really necessarily no limits. Uh, nothing is off the table necessarily, but just keep in mind those criteria that I gave you. And also keep in mind that I am going to be driving it year round. And you might be confused and say, well, if it's going to be a Jeep replacement, how the hell are you gonna drive a car year round if it's not all wheel drive and have winter tires on it? And I cannot tell you a good explanation for that right now um, because I may or may not keep the Jeep and I may or may not be getting this other future car, which uh, I, I do have one, a few of you guys might know, don't spoil it if you think you know or you do know. Um, but I do have a car that's an actual specific car that I like. It is black, which is insane, and I can't believe I'm even considering a black car. But if you guys want detail and content, what is the best car to show progress, 50-50 shots, wax versus coating? I mean, this is gonna be a car that I'm not gonna be afraid to get a cool set of wheels for and do springs and do a bunch of stuff too. So an M5 or something would be really cool to do that too and I think a lot of you guys can relate to it on the BMW channel. Uh, I did notice that no one um, said pickup truck. You know, under 20 grand is kind of what I'm thinking. Ideally less than that, but uh, that's kind of, whoa, it's the, uh, that is the uh, trickle charger. I'm looking at cars. I really am actively looking. That is why I was actually in Chicago, is I actually did see a car that I liked. Yes, it actually was a car, not a truck. And naturally, there's a helicopter right above. All right, guys, so I think that's gonna do it. I don't wanna drone on too long, but I think you guys get the idea. There's a handful of BMWs I'm looking at. Um, I'm not sure if I would consider Audi just because it's like, Everyone I know that owns them says something about maintenance and it's not the case with BMW no matter just I've had a couple of BMWs and I've had a lot of guys who've had BMWs they do not say the same thing as Audi guys it's just in my experience so if you want to think I'm some fanboy then that's fine that's just what I've heard so with that said I'm going to end this video comment below if you haven't already I was going to make this a surprise about buying a car or adding a car to the channel or surprising you guys with what car it was, whether it's a car or a truck or whatever it happens to be. But I think it'd be much cooler if you guys were a part of it and uh, kind of see the process and see my first impressions and maybe get to see the car on a test drive and stuff like that. I think that, that that's the whole point of this channel. The channel isn't to clickbait you guys and say, oh, should I buy this? Or, oh, I bought this surprisingly. I think it's much cooler to involve you and I can get a lot of people's impressions and uh, test drive those cars and then I will make my decision ultimately, of course, uh, but you guys are gonna be much higher involved and a lot of you guys, really the value is you get to see the content, you know, more, if more people 
are telling me about a certain car, I'm probably more willing to buy it. That doesn't necessarily mean I will, but a lot of you guys are messaging me. You know, one of the guys who suggested an E60 M5, we were talking on Instagram and he was saying, you know, he's put thousands of miles on it and there's really been no issues and stuff like that is really valuable. I actually think it is value to involve you guys and uh, Instagram and the YouTube comments are really the, the main forms of learning about these new cars. E46s do make me a little nervous because of the subframe stuff and the prices of a one that's not screwed around with is kind of high in my opinion, but you know, there's always a private seller who's treated it well and either doesn't know what he has or he's just willing to get rid of it at a, at a fair price, which we'll just have to see. So I'm sorry that there's not anything crazy exciting happening. The M3 is in good shape. Um, I am thinking about doing more detailing videos on the M3, but there's not a lot. You know, you guys ate up my last video that I said how I washed my M3. And to me, it initially felt redundant, um, but it was sort of a different take on my video style where I made sure I labeled the product, where I got it and gave a few quick facts about why I like it and that sort of thing. You guys really liked it. I thought, you know, I, I took a lot of time to edit it, lots of hours, the music, the slow-mo, the shots. Um, I know that you guys really like that stuff because as soon as I have less of those shots, I hear about it in the comments. So this is not a video that has all the cool shots. This is an update video because this is the way that we communicate, right? So we're communicating through this camera right here. That is the way that we're going to be communicating so far because that's the way that you've trained me and I've trained you. So that's what's going on. And yes, I am wearing kind of like a tight shirt um, and that's because I'm going to the gym and uh, it's not because I want to look a, a certain way. It's I feel kind of weird filming in these shirts, um, but I am going to the gym and I'm doing a lot of cardio and I'm gonna sit in sauna. So I'm gonna be sweating like a crazy person. So that is the reason if you're gonna hate on me for the shirt. That's the reason I have it. Um, no, I'm not wearing my Ever Forward shirt. <laughs> totally sidebar, uh, the Max Tuning gang is definitely in my gang as well. So shout out to you guys for that. That always like takes me totally, um, totally by surprise. I don't know, I'm just, people are like, oh, is that an Ever, fo ever Forward? If you guys don't know who Max Tuning is, he's this dude like pretty much my age and he's extremely like charismatic, he's like, 1.2 miles according to my phone. One thing that I would like to start doing is incorporating cardiovascular into my weekly routine. Now obviously I don't have the best running form and whatnot, and I've always associated cardio with getting shredded, dude. Running form sucks, dude. What? Two miles, dude? My 90-year-old grandma's older sister can run better than that, dude. You suck. Well, how much can your grandma squat, huh? How about that? I try to be entertaining, but I'm just not like that. But a lot of those guys are actually watching this channel, which is cool, I think. Um, and that's like a fitness slash lifestyle channel. This is a car only. He has an SRT8, a Jeep Grand Cherokee SRT8, a newer one. So uh, if you guys are interested in fitness and his shirts and stuff, if you saw me wear, I have like a green one and a black one and I have a pair of shorts or something. So it's good stuff. Um, shout out to him, you know, it's good stuff. Obviously not a sponsor. Maybe you never know in the future, there could be companies that are willing, but uh, for now, no sponsors, just me and you talking about the future car. So comment that below and I'll see you next time.